Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Homs. Today we're looking at the music fan motion graphic tutorial and this is a pretty full pack tutorial so um, we're gonna get started here I'm not gonna go through the illustration of the van in this tutorial when we're going to add a background to this van and actually put it in a motion graphic itself um, we'll add we'll show you the illustration for the van but in this tutorial we're just gonna do the animation uh, the motion work and the animation work pretty much exclusively good so I've imported the image and I've separated it into its various layers plus I have my colors on my right hand side as well um, in case I should need them so I'm gonna go through the layers quickly we have quite a few um, let me just select all of them and just tab so that they're open cool so we've got the headlight the windscreen border the windscreen light the windscreen mask the bumper the car the flag speaker box the wheel mask tire marks wheels speed lines road contact road animation outline colors and background so there's quite a few layers we're gonna need all of them and as I go through the tutorial I'll be explaining more about why these layers are there and what the purpose um, they serve as well so that's the setup this is the image in front of us we're going to move on to the next part which is the wheel animation on the wheel bounce animation so we're just gonna go ahead and add a lattice so I'm gonna make make sure that we are in object mode I'm gonna hit shift and a on my keyboard and we're gonna select lattice let me just put the cursor in the middle just before we just do that and select lattice good then we're gonna have s and x to scale it up we want it to scale it out we want it to um, cover both of the wheels here all right and um, this looks about okay now typically lattice um, when we import them they cover a lot of Z space here so we can see it's a lot of Z space here so we're just gonna hit S and Z just to scale it in we're gonna have a lot of lati I guess that's the way to call them and um, as a result we don't want them to interfere with each other too much and so this is a good way to do it we're not going to add any segmentation to this lattice here because I think this is okay for the animation we're doing for the wheel bounce good then we're going to go down to data and we're going to hit go down to the lattice mod lattice um, options here data and we're going to go to shape keys and we're going to hit this plus button twice one for the basis one for key one good and then we're just going to go ahead and press tab on our keyboard Good. Then we're going to hit Shift and Z so that we're in wire wireframe mode and in edit mode, which is what the tab was for. Just going to go ahead and select these two top at the top here, these two top um, vertex points for the lattice, and we're just going to go ahead and hit G and Z. Just bring it G and Y. Just bring it down a bit and press Tab. Right, we're not seeing any change now. Now, typically, you would want to go into modifiers first to see the change. So we're gonna do that. All right, but since we're in object mode, we did this first. So we're gonna select the grease pencil object here, and then we're gonna go over to the data. We're gonna go over, sorry, to the modifiers. We're gonna add a modifier, and we're gonna add the lattice modifier. And in the lattice modifier, we're gonna select an object and the object should be the lattice that we've just made then we're going to go ahead and decide what that lattice is going to influence and we only want you to influence one layer and that's the wheels layer so we're going to go to the wheels all right this lattice is actually going to modify more than just the wheels layer but for now for the bounce we're just going to have it modify this so we're going to rename this because we're going to have quite a few of these modifiers and i'm going to call this wheel wheel bounce cool after we've named it wheel bounce now now if we go back to our lattice modifier and take a look at the key and take a look at the value we see that the the tires are indeed moving good if it's a bit too squashed then we can just lift it up a bit 
Okay, let's take a look at that. Yeah, I think this is about right, about good. Let's go to Shift Z so that we can see it in our um, rendered view. I think this looks about okay. Okay, so what we wanna do now is animate this. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go through and animate this. We're gonna insert a keyframe on our key shape key value. Put one at one. Then we're gonna put another one at seven. Let me just use my middle mouse button to scroll up so that we can increase the size of each increment. I'm gonna go to seven, insert keyframe here. Then we're gonna go to 14. What looks like 14, and we're gonna insert. Let's go to dope sheet so that we can see it. I'm gonna insert another keyframe here. And um, what we want to do is that we want to at, at frame seven just to bounce to go down. Cool. And then at frame eight, we want to return to zero. And that's where it is. And then at frame what looks like 22, I think. Let's take a look. It should be about 22. Let me just double check it. Make sure, yep, 22. Good, we're gonna have it go up again. So it's just bouncing and then at frame 29, we're gonna go ahead and just add the last keyframe, which is zero. Cool. And that way it's just bouncing here. Yeah, so it looks okay the bounce looks okay to me what we want to do now we want to make this cyclic so we're going to go over to our dope sheet we have dope sheet drop down sorry the this drop down here and we're going to move to graph editor then i'm going to select this drop down for key set value key which is the keyframe that we've just created which is the bounce we're going to go to modifiers add modifiers and cycles and that's just going to repeat the bouncing animation indefinitely for as long as the timeline allows cool so now that that part is done good we can move on to the next part of this tutorial which will be animating all the other lattices involved in this grease pencil object all right so we've done our lattice work and i've added a couple of lattices that are kind of repetitive from what we've done in the beginning following the same wheel bounce formula and we can see them to the right hand side apart from some that are basically just repeats but for different um, layers in the grease pencil so we're going to take a look at the lattice that we've added just quickly and I put them all in their own collection so I can toggle them on and off as I will. So first up we have a lattice control for the row contact here. So I have it go back and forth. Cool. And we can see how the lattice is moving back and forth. It's just a simple shape key just like we did before. Good. Then we have a lattice for the car itself. This is the lattice for the car itself and it's following the same bounce as the wheels so we've added a similar bounce to the car um, that is that follows the bounce of the wheels so to the car chassis that is and then for the speaker box we have another lattice where we have the speaker box animate outwards if we hit shift and z we can sort of see what we've done here you can see how the speaker box moves out along the z-axis and what this does in 2d view is that it gives it the view of expansion kind of like the music is kind of pulsing through it so if we go to shift z we can see that <coughs> sorry yeah good and then what we've done outside of that is also add a lattice for the outline here so we can see as it's animating we can see that the outline is kind of disjointed so we're going to fix that right now right we're going to fix that in this section of the tutorial and we've also added some elements that would that 
some layers to lattices that are already done so that they follow the animation for example we want the flag to follow the car chassis animation so we had to add a lattice modifier to tell grease pencil and blender that we want the flag to be influenced by that mod by that lattice so in essence we can have more than one layer influenced by a single lattice um, a single animated lattice so just to take a look at that I'm going to go to our modifiers here and we have car flag that's how I've labeled it so we can see now if we play this you can see that the flag is moving with the car chassis if you go ahead and disable this good the car the flag no longer moves with the car chassis so we can see that this is actually working and we're actually going to do this with the bumper now from scratch so that you can see what we've done all right so we're just going to go ahead and go to our modifiers tab here i'm going to add a modifier and that modifier is the lattice modifier this is increased pencil now and we're just going to call this bumper modifier all right um and then what we're going to do is just select the car bounce because that's what we want the bumper to follow and then we're going to select the bumper layer good and then now the bumper that wasn't following is now following the car so if we take it off we can see it's following the not following it and if we put it on enable it we can see it's following the car now so what we want to do is add a bit more animation to the bumper so i'm going to go ahead to the layers make sure bumper is selected and we're going to go to transform i'm going to animate along the z-axis which is actually up and down remember that grease pencil transformation always uses the default blender orientation for the viewport so even though i've changed the orientation to the cartesian plane where the y is up and the x is on the x on, on horizontal y is vertical x horizontal in this situation we have to remember that z is actually the vertical and x is the horizontal right as the original default blender setup so we're going to animate the z here uh, we're just going to give it a small animation a small lift we're just gonna, and then on frame 5 we're just going to give it say in fact we can all make it frame 10 and we're just going to lift it by a small amount here nothing too serious cool and then what we're going to do we're going to go over to the graph editor oh, which we happen to be in already and we're going to add a noise texture and we're going to add in some coordinates here 0 0.120 for the scale and for the size we're going to be 0 0.0120 cool and um, this will give us a bit of rattle and shake which gives us a bit of interest into the animation itself cool so now that we've done that we're going to go ahead and um, look at some other animation here for the lattice modifier that needs to be done um, we want to take a look at now that the bumper is finished and that is done we want to do the outline but we also want to add a secondary animation to this car bounce because right now it looks a bit generic so we want to break up the, the car movement a bit by adding a, a rotation midway so I'm going to select I'm just going to go ahead and hide all of the other lattice except for the car bounce one and then I'm going to go to the basis here I'm going to add another shape key just one more and we want to just press tab let's take a look at and press shift Z so that we can animate this so essentially I want the car to dip um, it's on the side here and take a little rotation up as well so we're going to select everything and just rotate it up just slightly and press tab so we get something to this effect so we want this to happen every second animation loop not on every first so we want it to happen here to here and then return so basically it's only going to do this animation once every cycle unlike every other animation that's twice on every cycle so we're going to put this to one here 
and insert keyframe let's go ahead and change back the view so that we can see how it's looking and I'm going to bring this to zero and this is going to break up the kind of monotonous continuous animation that we have going on here a little bit good and then we're just going to cycle this now so we're going to go to the graph editor and add a cycles to this second value here and see how that looks good so it's added it's broken the animation a bit it is a little strong so we can reduce it a bit but i think it's broken it up a bit to make this animation a little bit more dynamic and a bit more believable so let's just bring it down a bit to like a zero point let's see how that goes yeah this looks a lot better good okay and then last what we want to do now is to make the outline modifier we want it to kind of just follow the animation and not feel left behind so, so we have this big black spot here so we're just going to go ahead and take off the car bounce lattice modifier and we're going to go ahead and add the lattice outline modifier i've added sections to this and you can do this by going to the modifier itself so i'm just going to go ahead and you can change the v and the u and that will add sections and basically just adds more topology for you to edit the mesh <coughs> which we may need for this outline modifier more than the others so we're going to go ahead to shape keys and we're going to add some shape keys here and let's go to ship Z. and let me go ahead and just select these now so what's happening is that the in fact let's not go to ship Z for now what's happening is that i'm just going to take off the background yeah so what's happening to the car is that once it goes through the first iteration of animation around here you can see that there's a lot of gap here so we're just going to use our lattice modifier to, uh, to correct this gap. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, select some of these modifiers. And we can even take the proportional tool here. Just use a sphere for now. And just bring this down a bit. Yeah. Oh, first let's add the modifier in grease pencil. So let me go to the modifier the lattice modifier and we're going to make sure that we're selecting the lattice outline and it's going to be influencing the outline layer cool and let's go ahead and move it see how we get and we get this and yeah something to this effect scale it up a bit and bring it down Cool. Then I'm going to select some of this now, push this in, and select some of this now and push these in as well. Cool, so the outline looks a little bit better. I'm going to press tab and we get this. Good, so the outline just evens out better and looks better. So let's go to our dope sheet here and we're going to add one more keyframe here as well one one more shape key sorry but first before we do that let's go ahead and just see where this animation makes sense at seven i'm just going to add a value keyframe here and then zero we're going to bring it back to where it was before so it scratches and comes back good and then at frame let's open up another lattice modifier so we can see where our frames are what we've done our animation at frame 14 we want it to return so let's just bring it back good and at frame 22 now we have another change 
Let's see if it covers it. It does. I think it does a good job. Insert keyframe. And then at frame 29, I want it to return. And then we're just going to cycle this. So I'm going to go to graph editor and add cycles. Cool. And then we get our modifier with our bumpy bumper. Yeah, this looks about right. Let's go ahead and unhide the background. And then we can move on. Now that we've done the outline lattice, we've done all our lattice, we can move on to the dot dash modifier now. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at how we generate speed or how we imply speed in the motion graphic itself. And we've already done it somewhat with the road contact at the bottom. This back and forth indicates the speed of the car versus the traction on the road. And we're going to do, we're going to add more speed to this now through the, um, the speed lines, we're going to animate the speed lines here, these air lines, and we're going to animate the marks on the tire. And these two things, along with the contact line on the road, will help to amplify the speed of the vehicle on this road, right? Or the way the viewer perceives the speed of the vehicle. So, what we have here is that we have this stroke here that's been masked. Good, so what I've done is that I've masked this stroke so it only shows here. And we, we can go over to the mask section. I'm gonna take a look at it. Dire marks, we can see it has a mask on it. And the mask is the wheel mask here. So if we go to the wheel mask and we see the opacity is down, we lift it up, we can see that there's a mask indeed here. So that the it doesn't show past these points here cool and we do that simply just by telling the grease pencil object that we want to have a mask enabled and the mask is the wheel mask we tell it what objects gonna mask it off and then after that we have to make sure the mask is above the object it's going to mask off so you can see that wheel mask is above tire marks and then we just reduce the opacity of the wheel mask because we don't want the wheel mask to show. So if we bring up the opacity we can see it and we don't see it now. So these now are being masked over and we're going to apply the dot dash modifier to this to simulate the movement of the tires. So what we're going to do here, go to the modifier, modifiers tab and we're going to add the dot dash modifier cool i mean it's going to modify the whole of the object right now but we only want it to focus on a specific layer first and we're going to focus it on the tire masks and we can see that this line that we have here that was masked off has turned into dashes good so what we're going to do is animate these dashes so basically we have the right setup on this already we have two dashes and one gap. I'm not going to change that. What we're going to animate though is the offset. And this is going to offset the dashes around the path. So at frame one, I'm going to go ahead and insert a offset here. And then go into frame 12. I'm going to bring this up to six. Insert keyframe. And we can see that it is animating here. Good. Now this animates along constants, so it doesn't have a Bezier curve as attached to it. If we go to the graph editor, we can see what I mean by constants. So I'm just going to select this part here and we can see it here. And let's hit zero, um, del delete on the numpad. We can see it's animating by constants here. It's not a Bezier path as it scrolls through. So this will be a constant animation here. And I assumed that, it, I worked out that it would take six offsets before it returns to the original place that it was, basically. So we use six. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a cycles to this. 
and it's basically just gonna repeat forever and you can see already this gives the car lots of speed but the tire is large so we need more than one so what we're gonna do um, we're just gonna add some concentric marks here Let's make sure that we can select it let's take off proportional editing and make sure that we can select this here that's the speed lines the tire mark sorry should be able to collect it right so we're just going to select the, these two we're just going to duplicate them twice so that they go across they span the entire tire and we can see here now if we animate them you can see it's moving up and down our mask isn't doing so well so we're just gonna adjust it a bit okay so we come back and we've just moved the nodes so that they mask cover where they need to cover and we can see that we have animation right through and this gives us speed to the entire car this makes it look like it's moving at a pace and we're gonna apply the dot modifier also to the speed lines at the back here so we're just gonna go and select the speed lines this is what we're going to be modifying right here okay we're going to go to the modifier section i'm going to put this dot dash and we're going to put dash wheels so that we know which one it is then we're going to add a, another dot dash modifier let's go to the dot dash here and we're going to select the layer we only want it to affect the speed lines and we're going to animate the offset just the same like we did for the tires cool and for this one now we look at the dot dash here i think i used for the dot dash here i used 12 for the offset and increased the dash so let's go ahead and add the animation for it so for here we have zero at the beginning and then on frame 25 we have 12 for the offset good and then i used a dash of four and a gap of three yeah i think that's about right and we can see that we have this animation here and then what we want to do now is we want to make this cyclical so we're going to go to graph editor and just going to add some cycles here to it make sure that we have the correct dash selected and go to cycles cool and let's name this so that we know which one it is i'm going to call it um speed so that we know that it's the dash dot dash modifier for the speed lines cool and that gives us this animation right here so it does pretty good i think we can even decrease the frames of it so that it has a bit more speed to it so we have at 25 but we can bring this over to like 20. yeah so that it has a bit more speed yeah this already looks much better i know our car animations begin to take in shape so after this we really want to move on to the we've done the mask, we've done the dot dash wheels we're going to be moving straight into the flag animation now all right i missed the mask from last from the last step so i'm just going to add that mask in and that's the windscreen mask so we're just going to animate it quickly it's already been masked off so what i want to do is i want to go to the location properties inside my crease pencil making sure that windscreen light is selected and uh, we can see it here just zoom this up here windscreen light is selected then we want to go to our x I'm going to insert a keyframe here and we want this keyframe to be um, 0 0.74 for the X for the light. Oh, I'm on rotation. Sorry, let me just delete this keyframe and put it back to zero. 
we do want the x location to be 0 0.74 good and then we're going to go to about frame 63 and then we just want this to be about i think it's negative 1.7 or negative 2 i think it's about negative 2 Go ahead and insert keyframe here, single keyframe. Let's clear these keyframes here. Yeah, and we see it come across here. Let's go to frame 63. Let's double check, make sure that it's a bit gone a bit too far. Cool, so we want it about here. That's, this is a bit better. Replace single keyframe 0 0.69. Cool, and then we just want to make this cyclical. Add a bit more to it. And we're going to do that by just going to graph editor like we've done before. Make sure that we have it selected and we just go to modifiers, add cycles. Cool. And we'll see it will just repeat indefinitely as it passes by. So the next step is to do the flag. So the first part of the flag is to do the actual wave animation, the flag itself. The flag is frame by frame. Um, so we, why we can do also do automatic interpolated frames, which we've been doing so far. We can also in Grease Pencil decide to go manual frames as well. Go manual frame by frame by drawing each frame ourselves. And this gives a lot of versatility to what Grease Pencil can offer. So you can go into interpolated frames, manual frames. You can use 3D um, viewpoint for your work as well as 2D work. It's quite a versatile piece of kit. So we got here uh, frame by frame that I did for the flag. So I'm just gonna show you how I go about doing the follow through for the flag. We'll have more in depth review, um, tutorials on frame by frame coming up. But just for this purpose, I've shown you a quick demo I'll show you a quick explanation. We see the red dots and the blue dots. And for each frame, you can see how the red dot is moving across. So for the rise, for the bump in the flag, we have red and for the trough, we have blue. And essentially what we're doing for every frame, we're moving that trough to the left right, of the screen. So, and we're moving the rise to the left of the screen as well. And this is how we get our follow through. So we want to make sure it moves all the way across the frame. So the wave rise and the wave trough is moving to the left and is being replaced by the trough and rise coming before it. And that's how you animate a flag follow through. Right. And then we'll go into the actual color um, information in the next part of this, where I'll show you how I actually do the flag colors themselves all right so that's the follow through and we have one about five frames for this so what we do after this is that we're just going to repeat the animation so it just con goes continuously i'll show you that in the next step as well the flag here we have the Jamaican colors for each one and I've done it for every single one except for the end here so I'm just gonna show you the last one in this flag uh, for the flag and we're just gonna draw it in so we have draw mode um, selected we want to make sure that we also have uh, appropriate material I'm doing the gold part of the flag first so I have the gold or the yellow I'm um, selected first good and I'm using the double curve um, curve operator here to do it now personally I prefer to do these in Inkscape because I think that the curve tools in grease pencil are a little unforgiving but in general it's um they're still very functional so we have the, the first part of the curve here. I'm just gonna press enter to apply. 
sometimes you get this um, bug where it moves the stroke that you've just created we just press edit mode and just reposition it and just press R to place it down here good then we can go ahead and draw the second one to make the cross and I'm just gonna bring this up here and curve this here cool and we're just gonna go ahead and extrude press E to extrude to extend the the um, curve once you've finished with the first one and we're just basically following the contours of the flag um, at the bottom and top to imagine to figure out where this cross would go and I think this is about okay press enter it's gonna shift it again but we just press tab to go to edit mode and we make sure we have all stroke points selected which is the edge select um, um, auto, um, equivalent to grease pencil for blender mesh so that's basically edge select and then we're just going to go ahead and just reposition this and then we have our cross next we're just going to go ahead and add the black portions of the flag I'm just going to go to the fill black area make sure you, whatever you're drawing with make sure you're using the appropriate material and that material is selected I'm just going to go ahead and draw the line but let me just zoom in so that we can see it a bit better and move it to the middle cool and then we're just going to go ahead and drag in I'm going to use these points to make the curve here and then we're just going to go extrude once we're finished come down to the bottom here and extend the curve this looks really good press enter and then we'll just press tab and select it and reposition it again and then we're just going to go ahead into vector mode and it's going to extend this right here extend it to the end cool and extend this down to the end and then we're just going to go back to edit mode select the stroke select I'm going to go to st um, stroke we're going to go to arrange and send backwards we're going to have to do this a couple of times arrange and send backwards um, you can assign a shortcut key to this I did before but I've forgotten what the shortcut key is so I don't want to reassign it until I remember but it's best because you're going to be using that a bit then we're just going to do the other side of the black here so we're going to go back to draw mode make sure that the black is selected and just going to draw out the curve here good next we're just going to press E extrude down to the bottom and then E once more extrude to the top we've got um, a bit of extra curves here so I'm just going to do this twice to make sure that I get it right and then once you're finished with your curve you're just going to press enter to apply press tab to go to edit mode reposition this um, to where you want it to go and then I'm just going to send it backwards so I'm going to stroke um, arrange and send backwards stroke arrange and send backwards so we have it here and the last step is just to duplicate this and just assign a different stroke here and that would be the border stroke for the flag and we could just see it flowing through here good so once we have the flag flowing flowing through the next step is to repeat this process it ends at frame 9 it starts at frame 1 we're going to go to our modifiers tab we're going to go to time set offset you can find that here and I have mine in there already and then you want to go to custom range and you want to make sure the influence layer is set to flag so it only influences the flag and we're going to set it from 1 to frame 9 and this is going to enable the flag to just repeat consistently beyond the frame and we see we have the animation here
right, and that's how we get our flag frame by frame flag animation there and there we have it our music van motion tutorial an advanced tutorial that looks at several different modifiers and techniques in grease pencil to achieve motion i think the result is really really nice we've gone across interpolated frames and manual frames and also we've gone across some concepts that we we use in motion outside of just the technicalities of how to achieve the motion things like the um, speed generation increase and uh, the interpretation of the movement of the van itself breaking up motion and uh, they covered quite a bit in this so i'm really happy with this tutorial and this is only part of a series we're going to put this van in the background um, and we're going to see how it operates in its in its in a motion graphic as it's going to be part of and we're also going to add a bit more to this van here I wanted to add headlights and also to add the boom boxes for the music box individually pulsate to indicate the music flow right and a couple more things also just to enhance the animation but for this it's complete so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, and for, for Patreon members, you're going to have this content on there as well as the project files so that you can mess around with it at a certain tier. You can get the project files and um, you can play about with this yourself, you know, and see how it's operating in the background. Also, there is extended material in Patreon that Doug goes through a bit of explaining because we cut some of the content from this just to kind of keep the time down as much as possible. So, until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new one. Later.